Hello, and welcome to the Rebecca Panda Pinto Project. Today, I'm excited to host an incredible woman named Vicki Cantrell. She is a retail strategist and a community builder who has been recognized for the relationship building and accelerated growth that she brings to the companies that she serves. She founded Vendors and Partnership, which is a community of retailers and solution providers who are treated as equals for the growth and benefit of the industry and long-term relationships. Vicki also co-founded the VIP Awards, which is the only industry-wide recognition for solution providers, both for their solutions and the partnership mentality. Her recent career includes the Retail Transformation Officer for Aptos, NRF's SVP of Communities and Executive Director of Shop.org, COO of Tory Birch, as well as CIO of Giorgio Armani and the Gucci Group. As you can see, Vicky is an incredibly accomplished executive who's been making a massive impact within the retail industry. So we dive into that in fine detail today. Enjoy the show. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this all week. I was so honored when you agreed to be on the show. So thanks for joining us today. Oh, I'm sure we're going to have fun. Always fun conversations. <laughs> Love it. Yes. And I already know what exactly I want to start with you because your career is so inspiring. It has been so cool to see like these just massive, awesome brands that you've served time with. Most importantly, Tory Burch. Like that one just popped out of me as like, Wow, what an iconic brand, what an iconic woman, and you got to work hand in hand with her. So cool. Other thing I noticed is that was the first really venture from you from a pure CIO role to a COO role. So start us there. I know it was later in your career journey, but start us there because it's just so cool that you spent your time there. I went to Tory Birch as the chief operating officer, um, and it was amazing. Of course, technology reported to me. You can't just go to your CIO recruiters and say, I want to be a COO now. You have to be very intentional about it. And so I was. Mm -hmm. I worked with new recruiters. I changed uh, my resume. I worked with a coach. I reframed it. I was very fortunate to have a broad network. Um, so I could tap into that. You know, you'll you understand that I believe in relationships on top of everything else. And so if I had to pick one thing that helped me through my career, it would always be that. So I went to Tory Birch as the chief operating officer, um, and it was amazing. Of course, technology reported to me. But when I went there, she was only as a brand three years old, and things were moving and shaking. Mm -hmm. And we grew on she was growing on every front, product, location, going into new countries, going into new distribution facilities, increasing e-commerce, changing over platforms. The growth was astronomical. And it was a crazy and beautiful experience because it really capitalized on things that were important to me, the customer. So the beauty of Tori is that people relate to her completely like they feel as if and she's so authentic and she was so authentic in, in social media that they believe they know her mm -hmm. and so working with we had the best customers in the world and the best brand in the world and the best leader in, in the world and she will tell you that she surrounds herself with the right people because she knows how important that was and we felt like the whole team was the right people to be leading through this growth. Yeah, not only were you a COO, but you were a partner in this mission, and um, and then having a CIO come under you that had to be a, a interesting experience as well. So talk more about like the the executive relationship component of it all because you are a relational person, like. Was it just magic when you met Tori and magic when you met your CIO and you knew, or were you super intentional about also saying like, I own this as an operator, XYZ is my remit, XYZ is your remit and Tori's this amazing face. What did that look like as you guys pieced this all together to be so successful? Well, it, it really was about a team. So the president, Bridget Klein, the CFO, Ripple Shaw, the, um, uh, Robert Eisen, this, this executive team was the, the ones where we put our shoulders together day after day and tried to navigate extreme growth and putting the foundational aspects of the business in place while we were growing. So there is 
no blueprint. I, the way I talk about Tory Burch experience is to say that we were, uh, it was like changing the tires on a car going 60 miles an hour. I've said it many yeah. times and I can't describe it any other way. Mm -hmm. You have to have an eye on the future to be putting in some very large foundational things, but you've got to be changing constantly day to day because the, everything was changing day to day. So the systems that were in place were not sufficient. And we knew that what we were putting in place right away was only going to last two years, but it was two years that bought us, you know, time to strategize for, for the big thing. You know, I would also tell you that um, being very honest, Tori, my experience at Tori gave me such great lessons and, and some of them very hard. And I would say that one of them was the first time I kind of tripped and fell in my career. And, you know, I can say that because it's, even though it's hard to say, people have, people, it happens to everyone. You can't rise to a certain level and not have both successes and failures. And so I find that it's important to, A, be transparent about that and understand that it happens to everyone and here's how you solve that and here's what you learn from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recently saw another or heard another podcast this week where someone else was, it was a recap of a session at a show and someone else was saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. I, I would have made a different decision had I known. It delayed something two years. It caused this problem. But we know that. And to be able to go back and say, I would have done this instead. I would have been, um, I would have changed what I, what, uh, how I communicated with management. I would have, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens in a vacuum. You aren't alone in these decisions, but there's all also the, the, the buck stops here. So um, it's important to do that. And, and it's also important to recognize that when that happens, it's because you likely didn't fail at any time before that. Mm. And you get very sure and you say, okay, we've always been able to do this. I think we can do this. Yeah. And so anyway, um, but managed our way through it. Um, it was something and the reason that, that we speak about it and Tori was very vocal about it. Bridget was very vocal about it. We were all very vocal about it was because it was something that disappointed the customer. Mm -hmm. And so we really had to come to the front and say, we hear you. We understand. We'll fix it. We're, we're going to take care of this for you. Um, but you know, when, when people talk about growth is a great thing, oh, I wish I had that problem and you know, all of that, you don't wish you had that problem if you've disappointed the customer. Mm -hmm. And I personally love the high growth scenario. I think if like you aren't putting wheels on while you're driving, you're bored. And so that environment has to be really exciting, but you also have to get a form of stamina for it and like have an appetite for it or else burnout can happen, you know, it just, it can implode really fast. So are there ways that maybe in your personal life or in your day-to-day -day at the office that you were able to like self-manage in that scenario, stress and relationships and, and just not get in a place where you were worried about burnout or worried about the team falling apart where you were like centered some people it's meditation. Some people it's, you know, an hour workout in the morning. I'm curious what your like go to personally or as a team was to keep everybody okay in that crazy environment. Wow. That's an incredible question. That's a, that's <laughs> a one. great question. <laughs> yeah. It's packed. And I would tell you that, you know, Yes, you have to make time. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot since then. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to make time for yourself and for meditation and all of those things. Back then, I probably did not do everything I had to do. But I will say that um, 
transparency and having each other's back Mm -hmm. all the time, even through the tough times are the things that, and I mean, people that worked for me, people I worked with, people I worked for, we had a good, amazing culture. It Mm -hmm. comes from her family, how she's oriented. And so it, it bleeds into the company. Mm -hmm. And so you know, there are times where someone can disappoint someone else, but you know you have to get through it together. So the answer to the question is you rely on the good, solid relationships that you've built and you get through the tough times together. Yeah. Yep. So you had an interesting journey with your career after Tori too that I found intriguing because you went from being the buyer to being somebody calling on and serving your industry that you love so much, which is retail. (laughs) Tell us about that journey and and what you learned from that experience. So I've been uh, across the map. I started out in retail, then became a solution provider, then was in retail for many years, then NRF and and then solution provider, Mm -hmm. which gets me to today. So, um, and it's it's interesting to have those bookends of solution provider because I really see how their life has changed and how embedded and and I really you know going to NRF was gave me so many benefits in so many ways because running the communities I saw the relationship firsthand between uh, retailers and solution providers I saw what solution providers do for the NRF for the industry for the ability for all of us to go to shows and thought leadership and knowledge and partnership and all of those things. We couldn't do it without retailers. We couldn't do it without solution providers. And in each group, the personality of each group was very different of how the retailers and the solution, the partners work together. And so it was incredible learning and an incredible way to build, to start to build that. Sometimes it needed a bridge Sometimes the relationship existed. The digital folks, the shop.org and the those folks, they kind of, the solution providers and the retailers built the internet together because they had to rely on each other because nobody knew what to do. So their relationship is strong versus others that may be a little suspicious or a little arm's length. It, it, every group is has kind of a different personality. So seeing all of those, and being able to really manage through and get people to a, a better way to work together mm. uh, was really fun and interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it has direct impacts to the customer. Just nobody can see it like plain as day when in that scenario. But if vendors and retailers aren't in happy agreement, alignment, whatever you want to call it, the people that are going to feel it are the consumers and it's going to be brand impacting. Yes, it is. And, you know, we've all, I've been around a long time. We've seen, you know, we, we had problem with a a partner at Tory and I, you know, experienced some phenomenal ones where we were able to do some really cool new client engagement stuff. So I've seen it. I've seen both of them. And when it wins, it's really exciting. So <laughs> that's what you're doing today, vendors and partnership. I just absolutely love what you're about with this organization. It's a big event around the NRF events every year. Where did that, I mean, I'm assuming I kind of have an idea of where it bubbled up, but was there a moment when it was like, this is the impact I want to make in the bridge between the vendor side and the retail side. And then you were able to really chart a path to what is today vendors and partnership. Changing the way people do business is definitely pushing a rock uphill. What they understand and the reality of their financial measurement could be at odds. And that happens everywhere. That happens in every business. That happens on every side. It happens in retailers. You know, if you threaten someone's commission because you give the um, the sale to a different channel, if you are trying to um, 
sell something in a solution provider, a product that is not quite ready versus one that is absolutely ready and I can make a commission versus something. Whenever you are are dealing with someone's livelihood, you have to understand the impact and bring people along and manage to what is going to make sense so that people you bring people along to whatever change has to be made. We all know logically that the long-term relationship with a client will be way more fruitful and have way more benefits and be worth a lot more money than the quick sale to make a quarterly number. But that doesn't change the metrics of having to do that. So it would be nice if that could be looked at in a very innovative way to try and find new ways of, you know, how to change the the way revenue is recorded and things like that. But that would take some real innovation. <laughs> Vendors and Partnership 2.0, let's go. <laughs> right. Got a big problem to solve. So I thought by doing the, uh, the VIP awards, and those are really important because there are no awards for this great community in the industry, okay? There's tons of retail awards, but we need to recognize the solution providers and what they bring to the table and give them a new way to talk about their their accomplishments and what they're doing for the industry. How are the votes awarded? Is it community-based as well? Once the nominations are in, we do go to public voting. That gives the uh, nominees a, an ability to get out to their customers, get out to the world and talk about the fact that, you know, they're nominated for this award, any particular award. Um, so we do do public voting and then the judges go through it. And then the big night, uh, which this year is going to be Friday night, January 13th, 2023, still at Gotham Hall, which is a a beautiful and wonderful venue for us. Um, and so we're really looking forward to it. Well, that's amazing. And I don't think it's hype. I'm bought in. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I think you're incentivizing the right behavior and it's a shift that will impact the entire industry over time as people get more and more used to this being a value set to build your company and go to market around. I, I think it's incredible. I want to shift gears a little bit now to a personal side of, I think what complements a lot of what you believe and what you've put into vendors and partnership, but it's back to principles and a personal principle that you have that's led you to be successful in business. What would you say that is? Number one is always assume the best. Assume the person is coming to you with the best of intentions that if something is upsetting or not right or isn't going to work, dig in a little bit. Okay. So start with assume the best. Mm -hmm. And that's one that I feel is really important. Um, as a leader, I think it's also really important to be vulnerable. Um, people have to see that you can, um, have trouble and make it through because they are having trouble and they don't, like to feel they won't grow if they feel like they're the only ones that have trouble. And so being vulnerable, I think is um, a, a really key um, trait of a leader. You know, if you talk about guiding principles, integrity is the top, the absolute top. Um, wouldn't be able to do anything without integrity and working with people who have integrity. I've made some decisions. Um, about things that I've done, especially in the last five years where I could have potentially grown something further, but only will work with people who I'm completely comfortable have the level of integrity that I need for, for me. Amazing. I love it. So. Well, this has been so much fun, Vicki. Thanks for your time and your wise advice today. <laughs> It has been fun, and uh, thanks for asking me to be Absolutely. on. Hope we can continue the yeah, conversation. Yeah, we'll catch you again soon. And for those interested, we'll have more information about vendors and partnership in the links below so that you can check that out if you happen to be at NRF next year.
Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Rebecca.